Welcome into a very special edition of Beat the Bookie. Noah Sears in here. We also got Matt Bonaparte, not one, but two hosts today. We're talking NFL Draft, and Matt and I have been grinding the tape, looking at all of the rankings all year long, and we've got some solid picks, Matt, to make people some money. I mean, this is our Super Bowl, Noah. I am amped. It, it, it's going to be a lot of fun. Before we get into our picks, though, let's take a look at how Jaron did last week. He hit a parlay, set a beat the bookie record, made $75 on the day. You know, really can't say enough about what Jaron May did last week. I mean, maybe he's got to stay off the phone at night because this guy, he's spending too many hours on FanDuel. I mean, two beat the bookie history parlays is pretty impressive for me. Jaron May, I mean, what else can't he do? We'll take a look at the standings right here. He is right there at the top. Uh, really by himself. Ben Shulman also having a solid day, uh, about $20 behind him. Then we go to the bottom. Unfortunately, you see my name, which is really, really discouraging. I will say I have some solid picks. Uh, and then Tyler, Nick, just not really there, Matt. Yeah, I mean, Tyler Molito continues to be bad at this, but uh, Nick Salaya is a name that not many uh, expect to see down there. But as long as we can stay away from those two names, because there's a lot of ground to cover between eight and nine. If we can stay away from those nine and ten guys, I think we're, we're in the clear. Exactly. Exactly. We're not going to waste any more time. The way this is going to work, we both got $40, we both got four picks, and then we both have a pick that we kind of went in together on 20 bucks. so wait for that one at the end. First, though, starting off with my first pick, and I'm going to the quarterback market. It's the position that is always talked about come draft time. A little bit different this year, though. There's not that guy that's going to go first overall, second overall necessarily, but if you go all the way back to 2015, at least two quarterbacks have been taken in the top 10. That's why I I love Malik Willis to be picked in the top 10. I'm putting $5 on that. Willis, a guy that has the highest ceiling in this draft. I think consensus says that, and my eyes say that as well. I saw him play in the Dome this year. He's got a great arm, needs to work on the accuracy a bit, uh, but I think Willis has a lot of potential, uh, and somebody will see that potentially trade up into the top 10 of Pittsburgh, a New Orleans, uh, and he'll get taken there, Matt. Yeah, and you said it. We got to see him play in the Dome this year, and he was absolutely sensational scrambling away from the Syracuse defense, making tough throws. This guy, uh, he's got that potential. And probably the highest ceiling, like you said. And I'm going to stick with the theme of quarterbacks for my first bet. There's been a trend of teams taking really bad ACC quarterbacks for no good reason over the last few years. The Bears traded up to number two in 2017 to get UNC's Mitchell Trubisky. And then in 19, the Giants took Duke Daniel Jones with the sixth pick. Both those guys stink. So maybe teams finally realize their mistakes this year. But regardless, it seems to me like we're reared and ready for part three with Kenny Pickett this year. I see the Panthers taking small hands McGee at six, but if not, I could I could see Atlanta at eight or maybe Seattle at nine doing the same thing. I like Pickett to be a top 10 pick. I'll take the bet for 10 clams at plus 250. Yeah, he might not be palming a basketball any day soon, but Pickett is the guy that can win now. I love like a pa uh, Panthers fit for him. Uh, it would be funny going from Pitt to Carolina. Potentially a good fit there. I'm sticking on the trend, though, of those top 10 picks. And I'm going to the safety market, a position that a lot of people don't think there's as much positional value. But Kyle Hamilton is an absolute baller. He's going to be picked in the top 10. I'm throwing $10 on that. On my personal big board, he is a top five prospect. He's got great size for the safety position, six foot four, 220, and still has room to grow within that massive body he has. And he has all the traits you'd want. He can blitz the quarterback, something that, you know, any NFL defensive coordinator is just drooling at the fact that having a safety that can get downfield like that. So I love Hamilton in the top 10, maybe even a trade up, the Vikings trade up. That, that's my dream scenario. Harrison Smith uh, alongside him, the Notre Dame combo. I think it'd be great. Man. I, I've been hearing about that safety combo pretty much all yeah. week from Noah. Yeah. So I mean, you really want it to happen. At least he's sincere. Uh, from one massive guy to another, Jermaine Johnson has been a name we've heard for such a long time now from last chance you to his two lackluster years at Georgia to his final strong season in the ACC at Florida State. The fans have been behind this guy for a while now. I think he's a great player. He's certainly going first round, but not top 10. Too many teams in the top 10 are after offensive line depth or D-backs. It's after that 10th pick where we find potential landing spots. How about the Vikings at 12, Texans at 13, or Ravens at 14? All orgs that are poised to take a defensive guy first. Uh, I've got 10 doubloons on Johnson to fall outside the top 10 
at plus 182. A lot of people do like Johnson, though. I think a lot of teams I have heard have him as potentially their third, even second best edge rusher, which is not down the stock of the guy I don't understand at all. It's my next pick, Kayvon Thibodeau. He's the guy who I think is arguably the best player in this entire draft. Uh, but guess what? He's not going to be picked one two, three, four. I'm taking the over on his draft position at four and a half. Now, uh, this feels a little weird because I think he should be taken in that top four, but it seems like Trayvon Walker is going to get taken at one. Then you got Hutchinson at two. I don't see the Texans or Jets going for an edge rusher. I think the Texans need to shore up that offensive line. Jets potentially get a skill position player. So I think Thibodeau or Thibodeau falls past that four spot uh, and even possibly out of the top 10 maybe. It seems crazy, but I feel pretty That's safe as spent $10 no, you're on wrong. You're absolutely crazy. Don't take that one. Take the one I'm about to tell you because I like Kayvon, uh, and you said it. He's arguably the best player in this draft. How about Kayvon Thibodeau? It's been a tumultuous year for the guy. He was once the number two recruit in the nation. He got hurt in the first game of the season against Fresno State and didn't play for nearly a month after. Despite that, though, he came back strong with 6'5", 250 pound defensive end recorded 11 sacks and seven tackles for loss when he came back. I'm going to get specific. He's going fourth overall to the Jets. Mark my words. New York got its offensive line depth with Makai Becton in 2020 and Elijah Vera Tucker last year. I like 10 bones on plus 450 odds for the Jets to scoop up this Grecian god at four. Don't get me wrong. I think he's great. This is also a little bit awkward because I guess the viewers now have to pick and choose. Yeah, who's, I mean, they do. Who's the better NFL draft Maybe shark? the guy who isn't eighth on that list. Exactly. So Kayvon Dividow, we both love him. That's all you got to know about him. My final pick, though, I'm heading to an absolute, you know, we've talked about the size and stature of some of these guys. This dude is an absolute beast. Iki Aquanu, North Carolina State offensive lineman, dominated especially in the run game. He's going to be the first offensive lineman off the board. I think that he gets picked top five guaranteed. Watching his tape, he is just absolutely dominant. Uh, it's funny because a lot of people actually say he is too aggressive at times. So if he rears that back a little bit, uh, he is going to be a all-pro tackle or guard potentially because he's athletic to play both. Uh, he will be a all-pro for years and years to come. So I'm throwing $15 on Aquanu to be the first offensive lineman off the board at minus 150. I, I like that guy too, and we're going to get to more about him in a little bit. But from the brick wall to the guys that they're protecting, it's taken a while, but the NFL is finally coming around to the idea that running backs are worth almost nothing in terms of draft capital. We're seeing star running backs fall out of the first round in recent years, and rightfully so, but some teams are still behind the curve on this phenomenon. And so we're going to see Brees Hall go in the first. Don't get me wrong, he's a good player. 1,700 all purpose yards last year, 23 touchdowns from scrimmage, and those stats are going to swindle some team, probably the Chiefs or the Bills, into taking him in the late first. Give me an Alexander Hamilton on Hall going in the first on plus one, 175 odds. And we should say that Brees Hall is a phenomenal prospect. It's again just positional value, something that is always preached about during this time. So uh, I think that's an interesting one. Definitely could happen though. Now is the time though. This is our joint bet. 20 buckaroos. 20 of them. On this bad boy. And I don't even think we have to say any words. If you couldn't get that, we're doing the Icky Shuffle because Icky, man. Icky Aquanu is going to be the third overall pick to none other than the Houston Texans. It's the perfect fit. Davis Mills actually showed some promise last year as somebody who could potentially be a quarterback of the future for Houston, so naturally they got to protect him. He could slide in, add guard, play next to Laramie Tunsil, yeah, who I, I know mean, you love, Matt, uh, and I think it would just be a phenomenal offensive line uh, and a phenomenal start to what is going to be a long rebuild in Houston. Yeah, this guy, he's an absolute beast, and we're talking about offensive linemen uh, from Houston. You talked about him. How about that NFT from Laramie Tunsil today, uh, maybe uh, in a couple years. Icky's going to have the doubloons to put some cash on. Exactly. Draft memories always huge uh, in Tunsil finding ways to profit off it, which is pretty cool. Uh, we're going to take a look at the recap real quick. A couple of our big bets. I start things off with Malik Willis being a top 10 pick, as well as Kyle Hamilton. I think Kayvon Thibodeau slides, though, and we already talked about Icky. Absolute dog. He's the first old lineman off the board. For me, it's a little bit different. For the quarterback, I like Pickett to go in the top 10, not because he's a great player, but because NFL GMs are dumb. Uh, moving on, you got Jermaine Johnson. He's a great player. Uh, played his way into the first round 
round this year, but not quite into the top 10. Give me the mid-teens for him. And then we disagree on Kayvon Thibodeau. You have him going after fourth overall. I have him going at fourth overall. That guy's an absolute king. And then, again, NFL GMs, what are they, Noah? Geniuses. Dumb. They're dumb. Brees Hall going in the first round because nobody understands that running backs are not worth it. And then, of course, we've got the Icky Shuffle uh, as that joint bet. Yeah, it's going to be a fun draft to watch. Make sure for your draft party you put out those cold cuts because you're going to be doing the Icky Shuffle when you hit that bet. That's all we got here on this edition of Be the Bookie for the NFL Draft. Alongside Matt Bonaparte, I'm Noah Searson saying so long and enjoy draft day.